out. From their backwards clothing to the Mac Daddy to the Daddy Mac. Off Rough House Columbia Records, please put your hands together for Criss Cross performing their hit single, Jump. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to go get you some tissue? Okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. How are your feelings you. as the event gets closer? I'm very excited. Um, we want, because Chris died the way he did, and there were a lot of speculation and innuendo, some of that I would like to get cleared up. But um, I'm just very excited that we can put this together in remembrance of him. And I'm also excited that we as a people, and I mean as a black people, we don't do enough to help our youth. And I was speaking to someone who was the president of a school, and he said, these kids, they want to go to school. And he said, every little drop in the bucket helps. So he was like, he said, you know, I'm just so, he was so encouraged and he made me feel so good. And that's what makes me feel good about this event. It's just a little something, but every little drop counts. And we just want to help somebody in a small way. So what part are you looking forward to the most with the upcoming event? The part that I'm looking forward to the most? Well, I, you know what? If you know my family, we, like, we love to get together and have a party. So give us a reason, we're going to have a party. So I'm looking forward to the festivities. I'm looking forward to all the people that I'm going to get to meet. And just, you know, the purpose of it really and truly is about education. Mm -hmm. And just to give this kid something to help him along the way. Mm -hmm. So I'm just looking forward to the entire event. I'm excited. Okay. Yeah. So um, as we all know, Criss Cross is one of the huge rap duos in the 90s. How did he? How did Chris tell you about when he met Jermaine Dupri and you know upon being signed to Rough House Records and you know on his way to superstardom? How did he tell you about that? And what was that experience like for your family? Well, you know what? He didn't need to tell me because she was because right I there. was there. <laughs> I was there. We that was the the best shoe shopping trip of a lifetime. We went to Greenbrier Mall to purchase some sneakers. I told Chris, if you save $100, you can buy the sneakers you want, okay? So, you know, that's going back 20, 25 years ago. And he saved the money, and then we got there. We got into an argument because I said, no, I can't let you do it. That's just too much, you know? <laughs> so we were out in the, uh, in the, uh, outside the store there, uh, and we were just having this back and forth thing, and Chris Smith was saying, oh, Donna, let him get the sneak, you know? So, and that's when Jermaine and, what's her name? I can't think of her name. Deanna from Silk Times Love. She was the DJ of that group mm -hmm. at the time. And they came strolling by. Mm -hmm. And really the rest is history because Chris, Chris and Chris, they were the cutest little boys. Mm -hmm. And that day we had happened to go to the barbershop. They had fresh haircuts and they just looked so clean. And all the little girls at the mall was <laughs> messing with them. And that's what caught Jermaine's eye because he came over to me and he said, who are they? <laughs> and I was like, you know, I said, that's my son and that's his best friend, Chris and Chris. So he thought that was cute that they both had the same name. And uh, he walked on past us and then he was on the phone and I said, Chris, I had recognized the girl because I had seen her in the magazine maybe a week or so ago. She was in Ebony Magazine. Uh -huh. They had an article featuring female rappers. And I had just, I saw her face and I said, gosh, she's familiar. And one thing led to another and that's, that was just, yeah, that was just it. So it wasn't like he came home, it's, we went home and, because we were all living together, my mother, Latoya and her mother, mm -hmm. and we were just so excited, you know. And Chris was like, he was, he was just his entire life. He always said, Ma, I'm going to be rich and famous. He told me that from a little kid, he used to say it all the time. Wow. And I used to say, Chris, don't say that. I said, because if it doesn't come true, you'll be terribly disappointed. Right. He was like, no, no, it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It, it <laughs> was, so, he was right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why don't we start off by having you introduce yourselves to the audience? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, how did the names come about? You know, back in school, he used to meet a lot of boys to use this term because they got a lot of girls and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, you just got to come around the All the girls just call us Max. 
Yeah. <laughs> I bet you have a lot, a lot of girls. Not like They watch the show. Some don't realize right now that your pants are on backwards. See. Uh, so would you just stand up this for a minute and show me exactly how this thing works? And for the most part, you wear all your most of your clothes back. Yeah. All of my clothes. Well, now this coat yeah. is uh, on the right. I think. Yeah. This is. <laughs> I'm all three crossed up. Uh, how did that start? Well, you know, we just everybody else was doing the same thing. So, you know, we just wanted to come and do something a little different. So, you know, that's when we came up with the back, backwards jeans. Totally crossed out. We were just kicking out with it. We just said, let's put our jeans on backwards. So, um... Last night, VH1 aired the Rock Docs, the untold story of Atlanta's rise in the rap game. You all got to see that? Yes. How did you feel about seeing him um, highlighted on the show and with Jermaine Dupri uh, quoting that, you know, they had a magic and an aura about them that made people just want to follow them? How do you guys feel about that? It was, it was definitely a true statement um, because from, it was, it was, Criss Cross was not only, it was an era and a culture. You know, the baggy clothes. Then, I don't know if you guys remember BBD, they used to wear sensors on their clothes. So, crisscross, Jermaine, they got together and they decided, and by the way, my aunt came up with the name, <laughs> crisscross. Oh, um, yeah. she, okay, how? She came up with that. How did you come up? <laughs> uh, well, you know what? Uh, <laughs> quick story, I used to work at a bank. Uh -huh. And back in the day, we used to have to look up people's addresses, and it was called the crisscross book directory uh -huh. and it, if you had someone's phone number you could look up the phone number it would give you the address if you had the address you know vice that right was okay and i used to have to use it the kind of work that i did mm -hmm. so it was in my life a long time mm -hmm. and when all this came about one day i came home from work and i called my mom and i said crisscross that's the name and, and we went through different changes with it Wow. And that's so mom goes down in history for naming the group. We got to give credit to moms. What, what, what is the most important piece of advice that you could give another parent or family that may be dealing with a loved one that's suffering from substance abuse? Oh. You know what? I, as far as Chris with substance abuse, I want to say this. I know he died of a heroin overdose. Chris's drug of choice was really alcohol. He had a serious, he got a drinking problem, mm -hmm. and I, you know, and he knew it. And he just, you know, some days, you know, he would like, sometimes he would just be doing his thing, that's what I would call it. And then some days he was sober as a judge. He could go weeks and weeks and weeks without touching anything. It's a very, when it's your family member, it's, it's personal and, you know, you want to talk to them and sometimes they don't want to talk to you. You just have to always be there for them, mm -hmm. you know, and be supportive. This thing that happened to Chris, it wasn't something that he was doing for years. And, and that's the part I kind of want to clear up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do I consider, would I have considered Chris a junkie because those were some of the words that were used? No, I would not have because yes, he smoked weed. Like most of most, this heroin thing was something that came along in his life in the last six months. And he started it, and I think it took hold of him, and he couldn't shake it loose. He was aware of it, and I think he was, try he was going to get help. There's a long story I could tell. We don't have time for it, but mm. within a, what a difference a day makes. And that truly is so, what a difference a day makes. That's all I can say, because one more day, and Chris's life would have been a whole, he would still be here with us. So it's just, all I can say is that you must be supportive. You know, as a parent, when you have kids, and I wasn't Chris's confidant, but we did have a good relationship. When, when, when the going got rough, you always, you just have to be there for your children. Mm -hmm. You just have to be there. You gotta, and I used to, I used to be a yeller and a screamer, and, and as I got older, I just mellowed out. And we were able to, to talk more, mm -hmm. and I found that he, we had some conversations, had I known he wasn't going to be, we had some conversations that we hadn't had his whole life. But because Chris was in the industry, he started at 13 years old, it took him a long time to mature. Do you think that has something to do with yeah. the substance abuse, the yeah, industry? Yeah, because he started, he started everything that he did, and this used, 
everything that Chris started to do, I can tell you who he smoked his first dr joint with. I can tell you who he had his first drink with. I can tell you who he's with when he had sex with somebody who put him up to that. You know, everything he did, he thought that he was getting away with something. And all of this, he was encouraged to do all of these things with adults. And I was like, y'all are not helping me out here. Mm -hmm. This is a kid, you know. But once the barn doors open, I mean, it's open and you can't hold right. back. You can't put a child in a, uh, an adult arena and then still tell them, oh, you're still a child, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just, it was a different experience to go through. But all I can say as a parent, you just have to support them. If it's drug abuse, you have to support them. If it's pregnancy, you have to, whatever the case may mm -hmm. be, you have to support them. My father used to always tell us, right or wrong, I'm always behind you. He said, and if you're wrong, I'm going to tell you that you're wrong, but I'm still going to be behind you mm -hmm. because I'm your parent. And I use that same thing with Chris. And, and Latoya knows that, yeah, because they were raised like sister and brother mm -hmm. as opposed to cousin. <laughs> <laughs> so can we expect to see this, you know, as an ongoing we thing so. every year, like yeah. an annual this, thing? This will be the first annual Live and Die for Hip Hop Gala presented by Lay Wise. That's me. <laughs> and we're going to do it every year. Yeah, we hope for it to be very successful and very influential. And next year, we're going to do it bigger and better. Right. Being that this was a group that was kind of before your time, <laughs> what inspired you to want to host the Live and Die Hip Hop Gala? Well, you know, growing up, hip hop has been a big influence on my life with my father and my, my godfather. And hip hop has just been around. so. With this opportunity, it's great because it's like, okay, well, you know, I kind of have some experience. I know about it. So, yeah. What are some of the things that you like most about the legacy that Criss Cross music has made in the industry? Even though it was before my time. I mean, I did some research. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, I, I like how they were, they were trendsetters. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the backward, like how they wore everything back, like their pants backwards and stuff. Like, you know, how they were so hype and energetic. I just love that. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. I, I used to wear my, my pants backwards too <laughs> <laughs> because of them. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> but, um, do you feel like the you today, you or your peers, any of you guys could relate to the music, Criss Cross's music? Yes, I do. Yes, I think we can relate to it because just like, you know, they, they had a message, mm -hmm. like saying how it's good to be different. And right now, as me, I know me, I love to be, I'm a leader. And I, Chris Cross was a leader. They they wanted to, you know, lead a legacy. Like mm -hmm. backwards, like what? Where is that backwards? That's amazing. So like, I think that <laughs> we can relate to That's Chris Cross. Cool. What, what are you looking forward to on Saturday as far as whatever the highlights will be? Like, is there anything specific you're looking forward to? What I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to knowing more about Chris Cross. You know, maybe getting a little more information about it. That's okay, cool. Let's go. Yeah.